Hello, hello, Facebook Live. We will be starting evening prayer in just a few minutes. Get rolling in just a few here. I'll be right back. Got to go find something. Hello, St. Paul's. Sorry, I'm trying to find my Bible. <laughs> I really don't know what it is. So hold on a second while I pull up my, um, my uh, online Bible. So I will have something to read. I have something to read tonight. right with you.
right, my apologies, I found it. I really can't find my Bible. Anyway, that's another discussion. Welcome, evening prayer, Thursday. Glad you're here. Let's just take a few moments and uh, gather ourselves, myself included, um, and let's do our examines for the day. And let's begin by taking a few deep breaths. Close your eyelids. If you inhale, notice the top of your breath and then exhale. Notice the bottom of your breath. And just become familiar with the space around you. And just allow yourself to be right here, right now. And just think back to those very first moments of your day. Where was God present? And now move ahead till mid-morning, around 10, 10.30, something like that. Where was God present for you? And now just move ahead in your day till noon, 12, 12.30. And where was God active in your life? Keeping an eye on your breath, your breathing, move ahead till mid-afternoon, 3, 3 o'clock, 3.30. What well, was God up to? And now move ahead to the present moment. This is where you are. And there's no need to be anywhere else. How is God calling you into this space, into this moment right now?
Maybe take a few more breaths in and out. And letting your thoughts be what they are. Good, bad, neutral, doesn't matter. This is where you are. This is where God has called you to be. You can just open your eyes and allow yourselves to be in the present. And turn to your prayer book on page 116. And if you don't have a prayer book, no big deal. Just let... Uh, me and those around you carry you through. If I say surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of God Almighty, let us be in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. And this is our prayer for the evening. In the darkness of the evening, the eyes of my heart are awake to you. In the quiet of the night, I long to hear again intimations of your love. In the sufferings of the world and the struggles of my life, I seek your graces of healing at the heart of the brokenness around me and in the hidden depths of my own soul, I seek your touch of healing, O God, for there you reside. In the hidden depths of life, O God, in the hidden depths of life, there you reside. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 131. One hundred and thirty-one. And this is one of the shorter psalms in the prayer book, one of the shorter of the 150 psalms, but it is my absolute favorite. It's the prayer that I memorized long ago and it always keeps me right on the steady. And let's say it together. Oh Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me but I still my soul and make it quiet 
like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait for the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we'll have a reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, beginning at the 17th verse. Mark 10, verse 17. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Mark chapter 10, chapter 17, we're following along with Jesus, and he is teaching He's doing his thing. And I think that this is, um, of Jesus' teaching, this is one of um, his more direct teachings. At least it is for me. Um, number one, it starts out by saying that as Jesus was setting out on a journey, and of course what we know about this is that Jesus is setting out on a journey toward Jerusalem. He's starting out as, on a journey toward the cross. Um, but I think there's something really figurative and metaphorical in this line, and he was setting out on a journey, because all of us are setting out on a journey. Um, we have set out on a journey. Over these last several weeks, we um, have really been on a different journey. For me, it's a different kind of journey than I've ever been on. And it really does make me think about what I believe is at the heart of this gospel, which is what is valuable to us? With what do we identify? This man uh, really wants to know what he needs to do to inherit eternal life, to kind of reach the end goal. And Jesus says, hey, you've been, you, you know what the rules are. They're the commandments. You know, honor your father and your mother, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you know the commandments. And the man says, hey, I've been doing these things all of my life. And Jesus says, well, all right, well, you, you lack this one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor. So Jesus is saying here that even though we can follow these commandments all of our lives, we can do the right thing or seemingly the right thing. We can kind of um, follow protocol and do what we think is right, what society tells us to do. Um, he's calling us to go deeper and to dig into what it is that we really identify with. And in this case, he wants us to look at our possessions. Somebody once said, uh, oh, you don't have to give up everything. 
just the thing that you think about first. And, you know, whatever with that. But I think at the heart of, of this gospel and the heart of that story is what is it that, that makes us us? You know, what it, to identify means to be the same as. So what is it that makes us us? I think that's what Jesus is calling this, uh, this man to, and that's what Jesus calls us all to, is what is it that makes you and me, you and me? And for Jesus, he's saying that it's our relationships. It's our relationship to the poor. It's our relationship to Christ. Um, it's our connections to each other. And it's that we not get involved and caught up in all of the things that are spinning around us, that are calling us to be something other than who we are. And who are we? We are children of God. We are followers of Jesus. And those are the things that make us us and that make us who we are. So the man went away grieving he was sad. He had a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, I get that. I'm surrounded by a lot of stuff right now, gadgets. Um, and the man went away grieving. He was sad. So today we think about what is it that makes us us? And especially in these times, um, how can we hang on to that? How can we stay true to who it is that we are? How can we stay true to our real identity? Um, how can we stay true to the things that make us um, disciples and followers of Christ? So I welcome this particular passage, even though it might make me grieve a little bit too. But it calls me back to my home base. And my home base is knowing that I'm a child of God. And as the psalm says that we read earlier, um, I'm called to be still and know that God is God, and that God's got me, and that God has all of creation in God's hands. So with that, we turn to the Song of Simeon on page 120. And really all of these stories, the Magnificat, the Song of Simeon, these canticles that we say, they're reminders of, of figures in our story who put their hope and their trust and their reliance in Christ. So on page 120, we say together, Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And in our daily rotation of prayer, we lift up those who work in retirement communities. We remember those who work in nursing homes and other facilities that care for the elderly. We remember those who care for the mentally ill and for the disabled, providing multifaceted support services that they may sense God's presence and protection in their labors. In our own parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those who have asked for healing, for Barbara, Bruce, for Maria, Malcolm, Helen, and Scott, for Susan, our bishop, for Beecham, Jim, for Jamie and his mother, Mary. We pray for Vivian, Liz, Brittany, Allie, Caitlin, Kevin, Joseph, We pray for those who have died, for Sonny, for Peggy, and we pray for the repose of the soul of Luli, who we buried today, for Yvonne, Marty, and Winston, for all who mourn. Are there other prayers that we need to lift up at this time? We pray for all physicians, for nurses, for all health care providers. for all who are sick and those who attend to them. We pray for patience in our own homes, for love, compassion,
We pray for all of our leaders and all who make decisions that affect the good of the whole. And even in these times, Lord, we pray for an awareness of your love, your generosity, your abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we close this evening with a Celtic prayer from J. Philip Newell. O oh God, you have given us eyes to see with and ears to hear life's sounds and sorrows. And yet our seeing and hearing, like our tasting and touching, are wounded and weakened by failures. As rest can heal the sores of a body and sleep restores its strength, so may your angels of grace visit us this night that the senses of our souls may be born anew. Visit our dreams, O God, with messengers of grace that the sense of our soul may be born again. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and those you love today and always. Amen. My friends, have a beautiful night and uh, stay safe. I'll see you tomorrow.